Hello, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to work on in researching on the internet. So let me launch my internet browser. And if you're at Weber, you're going to see the intranet system, and we will be working with research databases eventually. But let's do a general search first. So if we go up and um, let's go to Google is a good as place as any to start, and do our control enter trip to get the www and the dot com to show up and let's make a topic for instance Microsoft and typically on the internet the problem will not be uh, the case of not finding enough information the problem will most likely be finding too much information and you must figure out how to narrow those results down so I started off with something very much in general and just to see what shows up and there's a Microsoft homepage. Obviously, obviously, sometimes a good place to start to go to to collect images, to collect logos. If you're going to be doing a report or a term paper or a PowerPoint, we do suggest that you avoid um, Wik the Wikipedia site just because it's not considered um, academically sound enough to um, reference. It's always good to just go read it, but not to actually use anything from there because it can be changed by anybody. Um, you may see some more in-depth articles listed there, but it's always good just to check it out and see. And also with Google, realize too you've got you know multiple pages, lists and lists and lists of more websites to go to. So it just depends on how deep you want to go there. Now um, let's switch over to um, while you're still in Google and just go to images instead. I want to demonstrate this. So with images, we left it on Microsoft. So it's giving us all these Microsoft logos, which if you're doing a PowerPoint and you would like to include the logo, you can capture the logo. And what I typically tell my students to do to make for the easiest way to research is to, um, let me just go this way to my start button, and um, create some folders in my network folder. So for instance, I might um, go, I um, already have a fall 2013 folder, but I can go in and create a new folder and excuse my old XP version here, but it works pretty good. Um, let's just say a demo fall 2013 for my students who may be uh, online only and are not here to hear all this usually. So we'll make a fall 2013 folder on the network and then I'll open that up and we'll have a folder we'll create for the um, particular class that does a lot of research and you may want to make folders for all the classes that you're in this semester and then open this one up and we'll go down one more level and if we're going to research I tend to say okay name it the research folder whatever it's going to be about so um, let's say the research is about um, you know Microsoft so we'll call it Microsoft Research project or something like that and hit enter and then open that up and inside your Microsoft research folder for instance as an example piece you can have a folder in there for images only so that separates out your images which you'll need for your PowerPoint or your web design work and then next to it we're gonna have another folder and for just straight research like um, just a Word document with all your facts that you found on the internet. So that brings up the Word document. Let's create a blank Word document and save it in that research folder. So that's what I'm going to do next. Just launch a blank Microsoft Word document. And I tend to go up to page layout at this point and just select um, very tight margins. I, I just it's not anything the professor is going to see, but it just gives you a place to dump all your research at as you as you find it on the internet. So, um, don't really like that particular margin. Let me go back and pick a different one, and like a point two or a point five all the way around is pretty good. Okay, we'll save that. Now let's give it a name. So stop and save or Control S. I'm going to save this research document in my network folder. Whoops, wrong one. Let me go back up one. Uh, there we go in the demo folder that I just created and for 240 and open that up Microsoft Research Project open it and this Word document should go in the research folder not in the images folder so let's open that up 
Now I need to name, give it a file name besides just doc1, so I'll just call it Microsoft Research and save. So it'll save this. Now I'll look up at the top and it's what it's called it as I wish there. So um, at this point it's ready and waiting on me. I just got to find facts about Microsoft or the key players in the company and keep this document going with the internet and just have a place to for all my research to land. So let me flip back out to the logos. Okay, logos. Yeah, I probably could use a few. So um, pick some of the ones you like the best. I like that one. Let me click on the thumbnail. Now I tend not to um, sometimes I get a full-size image if I have this version and I can capture this image and save it in my images folder. So I'll right-click on it and I'll do save picture as and I'll save it in my folder. You save it in your folder and my demo folder is there and let me go to the images one. So I want to open up the Microsoft Research Project. I'll see my images folder and I'll open it. Now the file names are crazy usually with, with especially with images so you can name it whatever you want to that helps you remember what it is. So Microsoft Logo 1 or Logo 2 is fine. Just save it. Get a couple you never know which one you'll end up going. I'm going to go back on my browser bar. Maybe grab one more. Of course, if I want specifically logos, I can go up here and refine my search a little more and say Microsoft Logos and hit search. Maybe you want the round button this time for some reason. So click on that. And if you have the option to say full size image, click over there, select that, and then just right click on it, save picture as, and Again, you should open up to your images folder anyway, so you, that's the, I may want to call this round just so it helps me remember which one it is. So I've got a couple of them for demonstration purposes. Let me go back. Um, I could search off, you know, I know key players with Microsoft is uh, Bill Gates. If I want some pictures of Bill Gates, I can enter there and uh, maybe I get a formal one, maybe I get a casual one. And that one's fine, so I'll click on that one. Full size image. Right click, save picture as. And obviously he's the founder, so I may say founder Bill Gates. And save that one in the images file on the network, in my network folder. Um, we want to go back to Google and uh, change my search a little bit. And if I want a casual one more so of him, um, maybe that one. Again, full size image if I have that option. Save picture as. Uh, I'll just call it Bill Casual. Save that one. And again, go back. Now, um, the current CEO is. Um, Steve Ballmer and with your projects you know I'd like for you to have the founders pictures as well as the current CEO pictures so we'll search on him and again kind of you know formal picture as well as a more casual one go to full size again capture and I may say Palmer formal. And again, it should save in the images folder. So I'm building a collection of images to possibly use in a PowerPoint. And, you know, maybe you want a more casual one. And oh, I think we said full size image. There we go. And save picture as. And keep, we'll just say Steve Ballmer casual. Save. Now I want to move away from logos and CEOs and founders and go more um, into another area. I mean, other websites. Uh, biography.com sometimes if you're looking for specific information on a person of some degree of fame you will find them in there
they have a search box over here and sometimes I have luck with that and sometimes I do not let's try um, Bill Gates Now, uh, with this, with biography.com, uh, you'll have photos, you'll have maybe some videos attached to it as well, along with just text. So uh, if you want, and this is where we're going to employ the use of our Word document, where we're going to actually capture uh, some facts, you know, wh where he was born. I think it lost the connection there for a second. Let's see if it brings it back. Uh, let's try that again. Okay. And I want to capture some text this time with to have the facts on it that I'm looking for. And usually the professor will give you, you know, they want to know who they are, where they were born, when they were born, uh, some background on their early life. So if you want those kind of facts, I've got it right here with biography.com. And um, maybe I'll just... Um, highlight all that with my mouse all that text of course there's many pages besides just what you see here but if it's all got good information on you know early schools early childhood situations like that so obviously obviously you can see there's multiple pages here but this page will work for just my demonstration purposes today so I'll right click on that highlighted text I'll copy it then I'll go back to my blank word document that I've started and I don't use paste I don't use regular paste here I like to um, go ahead to the home tab here and choose not like I said not like I said regular paste but instead click on your choices there and I like the paste options that says keep text only the big A and that just strips out all the web code so it doesn't clutter up your word page so click on that one and you can see it's a t it's put it right on your page for you and of course this document may get to be you know 10 12 15 pages long with all your facts and then you know you start crossing out what you're not using and keep in highlighting what you are using in case you're creating a PowerPoint or, 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 or paraphrasing it all to write a term paper with, of course, with appropriate referencing. So, um, and that brings up referencing. Anytime I plant something on this Word page, I am also going to go back to that internet site and I'm going to cite that page, whether I have to build my own APA style reference or maybe they have a site button already and I can try it out. So this uh, biography.com does have a site this button so right at the top of the article. So you want to click on site this and depending on your school but uh, here we're APA style. So I'm going to highlight that APA reference. It's already in the right order for me and I don't have to re um, type it. I, I don't have to like build it myself. It's already there done for me so I can right click say copy and I can go back to my Word document and paste it. Again, I use the um, paste option there of keep text only. Now, just for coding purposes, uh, I do highlight this in red, or I do change the font color to like a red. You pick whatever color you want, but that way it stands out as a reference. And when I'm building my reference page, then I know exactly what I should, you know, I can just copy and paste it back over to my reference page. So that makes it very handy. Now, um, change your font color back to black um, before you leave and again we'll just keep going back and forth between the internet and the word document for any kind of facts we find along the way it is an exploration so that's a biography.com example um, EBSCOhost that's one of our paid for uh, let me click for a new tab here paid for databases that we subscribe to here so not available to everybody obviously but anyway um, if I go to the home button here I will see research databases on the intro on our intranet system click on that uh, EBSCOhost is there and we'll click in there the um, top one is the one I like for my students to use EBSCOhost web so click on that Now, a lot of databases in here to pick from. You don't, I don't have you use them all, but I'll tell you the ones I do want you to use. Business Source Complete is one of them. Um, go down. Research Starters defaults with a check mark, and that's fine. Leave it on too. 
and the one just below that is Academic Search Complete. I like that one as well. Always use those three for me and my classes. Now, the next part is you get your search box, so you can put your topic or person in there. And I also do this. I try to go down here to limit your results and select full text. I only want full text articles to be delivered back in the result list because I don't want any summaries. I want, if it's not the whole article, I don't want it. Okay, so full text only. Some of your professors may demand scholarly peer-reviewed journals only, especially when you get into the higher levels. Um, so you may want to check that if the professor demands that. So you can pull from um, just scholarly journals and not your um, just a regular public press kind of stuff. And we could go up here to our search box. Now I want to demonstrate how you can get too much stuff and then how you can refine it down a little bit. So let's say we just do Microsoft in general and we search. And when we search over on the left, you can see how many results came up. Okay, 83,283 articles. Well, I, you know, I don't want to go through all those, obviously. So, I need to refine my search, and maybe I do have a more specific topic in mind within the company. So, I'll say Microsoft uh, and, and I'll be using these Boolean operators of and and or, and refines your search. It makes it a smaller result list. So, we'll say Microsoft and Bill Gates, for instance. And I'll hit search, and let's see if it cuts down the article list there a little bit. Okay, from 83,000 down to 3,700 articles. And you can see the articles listed over here. So it's a big long list and multiple pages of lists. Now, if I even go further, Microsoft and Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. Let's see. Now what I'm asking for is for all those three terms to be in each article that it returns to us. So that's why they must be there or it won't return it. Search and let's see what comes up. Now we're down to 213 articles, a little bit more manageable, and you can see all the different articles. When you want to see an article, you actually just click on the link. Now, that's still a lot of articles, but I can cut it down even more. Uh, Microsoft came out with the Surface tablet last October, so we can say Microsoft and Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer and Surface. So it has to have all four of those search terms in each article for it to return those particular articles. So we'll hit search and that really cuts it down from 213 down to uh, just four results. Okay, So that's how you refine your search when um, too much stuff comes up. And as you get further into your project you'll realize that there are specific things you still want to know and this is how you search for it. Um, to also point out here other ways to refine your search besides just using a boolean operator there and asking just for full text articles, you can also do it by publication date. Now a lot of my students res research tech stuff so obviously old stuff doesn't work so um, you know 2008 to 2012 that's okay. I can even narrow it up a little bit more if I need to with the slide bar so that um, should show you that you can e either type the dates in there or you can use the slide bar to say just only current stuff please if that's the case alright so um, and if you're looking for historical stuff well then obviously you go back the other way now you can tell with each article um, in the little link and who you know here's who the author is of the article this is the publication that had the article in it and this is the date of the article and the, what page numbers it was found in in the uh, in the magazine or newspaper or whatever the media happened to be and um, you can just flip through there and this is just one page of stuff that's all Microsoft unveils surface if you want to see the article um, from USA Today you would just click on it and the whole article would appear. Notice that it bolds every search term you asked for along the way. You also um, have other tools at your disposal. Um, let's say there was something you wanted to search specifically within this article. You're not sure it's even in there. I always encourage students to use the control F feature which is find. Control F will launch this find box up here and whatever term you put in there, like maybe I'll say connect. That is a device that Microsoft makes and it will go find that word as many times as it appears in this article. So I, looking through here, it takes me, kind of scrolls me down right to it, but it found it. Connect camera. 
Okay, so it found that word in this entire article without me having to even read the article or even scan the article. Okay, so Control F is a very helpful tool when you're looking for things on the internet. And Control F also works when you just look at, have your own documents up in like a Word document. You can find a, a specific words within your Word document just by using the Control F feature. Okay, so that's another tool for your toolbox. Also, I want to go to um, Learn is another one of our databases. Let me go to Home and back to Research Databases. It's the quickest way, really. And go to Learn. Learn has a little access code here. So just hit on Learn. And then you have to go to Databases. And it's asking for a code, which was you could see that code a couple of screens back. Then Submit. And we subscribe to this, so there's lots of databases in here as well. And I like to use eLibrary, and sometimes I'll use ProQuest. And let me click on it and just kind of show you that um, works pretty much the same way. With eLibrary, they also add audio, video, and transcripts and other kinds of media to it as well. And sometimes I'll uncheck these because I don't want it to slow down my search. If I really don't need that, then, you know, I'll... I'll search on something else here. So, for instance, um, you know, I could also do Apple and Steve Jobs and Tim Cook and see how that refines it without giving me too many articles. And tells you over here, splits it out a bit differently. 120 newspapers, for instance, and 130 magazine results. And I turned everything else off. So um, this is their icon for magazines, and this is their icon for newspapers. I find them very similar. They sh maybe should have made it a different color. Um, but you can see, you know, the Economist is the publication here. And you may not see the author's name until you actually get into it. So um, if I click on that particular article name. It will display the article. It uh, gives you the, you can email the article to yourself. You can print out the article by hitting print view first. And then the citation view, which is always nice when you get ready to um, grab something and, and use it. So let me go back and just say, let's say I just, using my Word document again, let me find a paragraph that um, Take you know maybe this this second paragraph here, and talk about the transition over at Apple. So I can highlight it. I can right click and copy it. I can get it back to my Word document if I wanted to keep that for some reason, and um, I could um, go up to my keep text only and have it come in there. Now I need to reference it, so um, I'll hit enter and I'll go back to the article and um, look for the reference. So there's my citation view. Now we do APA here, so this is the one I want. I want to copy all, I want to highlight it first and then right click, copy, go back to my Word document and even though it skips down to the next page, let me uh, do the text only reference here. And I will make it, like I said, in red just so that it, uh, I know it's a reference information I'll be using you stop and save, control S to save what you just did. And you just keep adding to your wealth of research here. And like I said, you could end up with a multi-page um, document here. So let me go back to that. So I've got it cited. So it's so much better than it uh, was back in my day. You just, uh, you know, use your mouse and copy and paste a lot of it over. Of course, you need to paraphrase and you need to reference everything that you use. And... Um, Never use never use an author's words and claim them as your own because that's called plagiarism and you don't want to do that. So, uh, but at this point we're just collecting, so whether it be images or whatever. Now, um, let's also go to well, LexisNexis. That's another database. So go back to research databases and LexisNexis appears here. 
It's good for um, newspaper articles that were written since 1980. So it has a wealth of news. It's divided up into sections. So search just the general news, or do you want specific company info, like on Microsoft? So I always tell my students, it gives you a great little snapshot of uh, of a company. You can do it by name or ticker symbol, and hit the Go button for Get Company Info. And um, it may give you several links here, but look for the public parent company, which is the first one here. I'll click on that one. And it tells you on this screen, for instance, it's contact information. Um, and also how many employees it has. You know, Microsoft has 99,000 employees right now. Fortune ranking, all that. Um, but also there's a nice little business description here if you need a summary of what the company does. There you go. And of course you see other financial information, yearly financials and uh, stock price and all that on the right side. Top executives are listed down here for the company. And um, there's a financial section over here. I have used in the past, but uh, I've switched over to Morningstar for financials. But um, you can see them here. Um, if we go down to income statement, let's see. For some reason, the income statement goes is not current information, so they might need to they might need to work on that. Now, uh, but the snapshot is always good for when you're just getting to know a company. Now, um, let me get that back on Snapshot. There we go. Overview, let's go there. And so we're back there. So that takes us through a basic search uh, using Google, regular search, and then Google Images, and then visiting biography.com to search out information on founders and CEOs. Um, EBSCOhost is the school database that we subscribe to, as well as Learn and LexisNexis. So I hope that helps you in your research processes. Thank you.